Evening, welcome to the Derby Debrief from Rams TV, live from Pride Park Stadium. Owen Bradley with Sean Barker and Becky McGrover alongside tonight to bring you reaction and talk through the big moments. And there were more than a couple from Derby's victory over Reading this evening. All the action, all the major events coming in the second half. Uh, Dwight Gale and Connor Harahan's penalty, enough for Derby in the, inter, in the end to make it three wins out of three and stay second in League One. An important win because the rest of the leaders won tonight as well. Results and table in full to come and reaction from downstairs. But we'll kick off with a word or two uh, from the guys. Uh, Becky, deserved win for Derby or not? Uh, yes, yeah. In the first half, they can ju just controlled the game. They, I feel like they should have gone in, like, at least 1-0 up. But that's just how sometimes football goes. But, yeah, no, they fully deserved the 2-1 win. Sean? Sure. Yeah, I agree with Becky. I thought they had full control of that first half. Um, they were just waiting for that first goal. The disappointing pit, bit was they got the goal and then all of a sudden they just allowed Reading to get back in. They got the goal. Obviously, there were some major incidents in that which helped Derby along the way. But there were some really bright moments throughout the, the 90 minutes. Some of their forward play was great. I thought Gale was exciting. I thought Barquezen looked bright. Adams was outstanding once again in midfield. So when you look at this stage of the season, the team, the form, the way that we're playing, it was another positive evening. Uh, we'll talk about the, the major moments uh, in a moment or two, but when you look at the stats, Reading only had a single shot on target in the whole game. Did that sort of underline how much better Derby were for you? It's just the dom dominance of, of the performance, and um, we had that the last game here at Pride Park. Reading aren't an easy side to play against. We saw that early in the season. They've had inconsistencies, but they've put on some really good performances this year and they've got some talented players. They want to play and they want to press, so they try and get the ball back and, and dominate the play at times. And I thought we pressed and worked our socks off out of possession, which gave us that little bit of control and we built through the pitch really well. Again, one of the things that we recognised from the last game is sometimes you can play through the pitch and you can play short. Other times you've got to stretch it and go beyond, and we did that really well. There was a couple of balls from Adams, a couple of balls from Ward that allowed Gale to be on his bike and Barquez and Mendes Lang. So mixing up the play in possession has been really positive. Um, Gale's goal was wonderful, the touch and the finish. Um, and I'm delighted that Connor stepped up and, and took the penalty, which was a pressure penalty. I know we talk a lot about performance, but at this stage of the season, does performance really matter? Yes, because no, you don't, you won't get the results if you don't really have those performances. Yes, sometimes you might get like a bit lucky and like get the win, but I'd say performances they kind of breathe consistency, and we need that consistency and just the momentum, especially in the latter parts of the um, season when you've, you we do have a bit of that pressure. Like we need to stay in that automatic promotion places and you've got Bolton like like right behind us so we need to have that consistency because it just it makes you happier as a team as an, and play, as an individual as well when you're performing well. Well Derby have some momentum going into Saturday's game three wins in a row now for the Rams a big win for Bolton tonight as well as I say all the results and the table to come but let's get some reaction here's Derby's boss Paul Warren. Um, I think uh, my opinion of the game is I thought we were in Complete control first half, uh, done really well, created really good chances. Sibs had a really good one, um, as did Dwight, as did Tom, in fairness. And I thought we looked pretty good. Um, a bit disappointed with our throw-ins, but that's for another day. But um, So generally, I thought we were OK first half. Uh, and then, obviously, we went full press, and sometimes you're going to get picked off. But I thought when we did get picked off and it went to wingy, they sort of went long, so it wasn't a massive concern. But... And the disadvantage is, I suppose, that um, in fairness to Reading, I don't enjoy playing this team because I think they're really athletic. They're young, they're athletic, they keep going, they you know run off shoulders and um, and it causes us a problem, really. So as the second half went on, I thought we were still in control. Ironically, we scored and then uh, <laughs> uh, conceded. We missed, you know, missed uh, opportunities to stop the ball getting to where it was. We missed opportunities in the middle of the pitch. Three or four players could have had a bite and you know we could have stopped the cross and then obviously for um, Smith to out jump the centre half although you know he was feeling ill so um, he gets my um, manager's blessing for that error so to speak but luckily we had enough to go and win the game and I I think we created more than enough chances to win it I do believe both our goals are on the side of fortuitous though but um, we did create enough to win and in them games like it's like I just said to the lads like you know in, about critiquing it, it's about winning next one, winning next one. 
and go on to the next one, um, obviously. Um, and it's a, a big one at the weekend. But, you know, there was parts of our play tonight I really liked. And then, you know, our game management at times probably wasn't as good. And, um, and that's what's disappointing. However, you know, I'm standing here talking after a 2-1 win. If you'd offered it me before the game, I'd have, you know, obviously snapped your wrist off. So I'm really pleased that the lads found a way to win. And in the end, we did manage the last couple of minutes really well. And there were some really good performances. But I think you could see um, that some of the lads were gassed out. Um, so ideally, we would have got a two-goal lead. I could have made changes earlier, could have kept the team fresh, could have, could have, could have. But, you know, in the end, um, players played longer than I wanted them to. So no disrespect, which it is, to the opposition. I was just hoping that after one, we'd get two and make it a bit more comfortable. You mentioned uh, the goals being fortuitous, um, but we've stood here enough times and talked about decisions that have gone against you, I suppose. These things work out, to use the cliche. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in fairness, uh, I don't know how, how it goes, but, you know, the first goal, I can't decide if he's just on the edge of off or it's a great ball in for Wardy, by the way. But then, obviously, if it, if it is off and that goal doesn't go in, the game takes a different path. That's what I always try and explain to people. If you take that incident out, the rest of the game doesn't take that path. It's all different things that happen. So, uh, And then, uh, you know, uh, for the penalty, it was a, a good time for us because we weren't really good. But there's a real, which I love, you know, there's a real willingness from Dwight to running behind. I thought the front three, you know, one comes to feet, one tries to hold it up, one goes in behind. I thought they worked together really well. And, uh, you know, one of my outstanding campaigners tonight, I thought, was uh, Tom Barkhouse. And he worked tirelessly in and out of possession. And, um, you know, that's what you need. And he obviously will because he wants to play in that sort of free role so he makes it look amazing so I thought he was really good uh, and like I said apart from that one incident the defenders defended really well and when you need him to at the end you know Nat um, Nat sorry um, Cash and Nels uh, won their headers and it was nice to put Fozzie on I know if anyone can play in front of 30,000 people at Pride Park I've heard that he's played here before uh, so it's nice to put um, the old timer on uh, to sort of settle us down Three and three for Dwight Gale. Talk to us about what he has added to this team. Well, he's added a number nine that we obviously didn't have. So, um, you know, um, he well, he's added goals. He's added enthusiasm, um, and he's got a massive desire to win. And um, he's just a threat in and around the box. So, um, yeah, really pleased for him. Like. He, possibly could have had if he sorted his feet out first half could have had an, another one so uh, no he's done really well and like I said to the lads before the game you got to, like the reason we put this group together as best we could is because we need people who are going to care care about the club but care about each other but care about their careers and you know no game should just be like well it'll be alright like you can't you can't be like that you got to play every game like it's your last and I think a lot of the lads did tonight. You saw Nat was gassed out. Uh, Sonny was ill before the game, but thought he was okay. We intended to take him off earlier, and then he didn't feel great at half time. Felt a bit sick, and then he's thrown up when he came off. So, um, so you need them, but you need them players who you know care. And, and uh, Dwight's definitely one of them. So I'm really pleased to have him at the club. Not sure if you've seen results from elsewhere, but it's as you were at the top and onto a big game on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I've always said it, said it to the lads all the time. Like you're in a position where you don't need to worry about the other results. If you win your own, you've done it. So you've got 16 halves of football to gas out. There'll be loads of ups and downs and twists and turns, no doubt, like the uh, Blackpool Dipper. But um, you know, we go into the game at the weekend. I know Bolton have had a, a good result tonight, and uh, they'll come in full of confidence to play, and it should be a a good game but you know there'll be loads of uh, changes uh, before then so if we win the last eight obviously I'll come out and apologise to the fans because I've said this but life's never that smooth and um, uh, it's not that smooth at this place either in fairness so I'm, I'm sort of embracing the whole derby like, it's an easy way to do it or you know, it's a bit, you know make it a little bit more exciting so you know um, at Argos tomorrow the blood pressure machines will be sold out again but uh, really pleased Great win against a good athletic team that I really like, uh, and it's just on to the next one. So the lads can have a, a day's rest and we go again. Paul Warren there looking ahead to what is a massive game for Derby on Saturday, but we'll draw a line under tonight uh, first. And, and there are some big moments uh, to discuss. Start with uh, the sensible place to start, I suppose, is, is Dwight Gale's opening goal. More than a hint of offside, I think. Becky, what did you think? It was hard to tell from where I was sitting, possibly from the replay, yes, but I was just in awe of his first touch, like, to be honest, like it was such a good 
touch for the finish. Like it's bounced just before him, so that always makes it so much harder. But yeah, in terms of offside, um, it was a bit hard from where I was sat. Sean, yeah, a difficult one, right on the line. Um, again, the, the first touch was brilliant. The, the ball from Ward was exceptional. It was wet, played in with pace. It did zip off the surface and bounce into him. But the way he took the weight off the ball, he just cushioned it into his stride. Great finish. So he probably deserved that moment because there'd been two or three times in the first half where it's him in the box it's him that the ball's nearly bouncing to and it didn't quite fall kindly for him i thought it was very good that he's all around play so to get three and three to keep on showing what he can add to this team there's there's kind of more of a dynamism in that final third with him since we've been in there um since he's been in the team and I like the fact that Mendes Lang and Barquez are really mixing it up, they're finding different positions on the pitch and we seem like we've got a different way of playing every few minutes. There's always something, there's always a different option and it's, it's moulding really well together at the moment. Uh, no controversy about the equaliser but more than a hint of frustration from Derby's perspective. Yes, so I think it was just too easy. Um, they just, I think they just switched off. I don't know if they were still celebrating the first goal but yeah just I think they played through the middle too easy kind of the ball went across the pitch and then just just didn't win the ball in the box which is frustrating because when you've had so much of the possession so much of so much like positivity and like we, sh we should we should have been in front so like moments like that are disappointing and then you get to Maybe the moment the game changed, Sean. Maybe not. Maybe Derby would have gone on to win it anyway against 11 men. But the second yellow card for Andy Yadam, the first in the first half, maybe a little bit soft. I'm not sure whether he's booked for the foul on Conor Harahan and it doesn't look like there was much contact, or if he's maybe booked for, for the reaction because I think there were a few times in that where, where Reading players weren't too happy with the decision. But it's another one that I think we have to say has gone Derby's way. Very lucky, uh, extremely lucky. The first one was, was never a book in. There's nothing he can do with his hands to the side. I think it was Mendes Lang that flicked the ball up and it hit his hand. There's, he can't get out of the way of that. So even if he wants to give a, a, a handball, he can't book him for it. Um, so that's a disappointing thing for him in the first half. In the second half, Connor goes to the ground. He doesn't get touched. I looked at the reaction straight after the decision and actually Yadon know, moves away from the referee so I can't see it being a reaction. If it was, it's his own fault and he, he knows what line he's, he's on already having a book in. If it was for the foul or, or let's be honest, no foul, the, the contact that didn't happen, he should feel very aggrieved from um, that position. And I, I don't feel it changed the game. I, I don't. I think we had control at that point. We had a moment of, of sloppiness, as Becky was saying. It was far too easy to get that goal for Reading and get back into the game but I always felt we had control and we were going to win it. It kind of changed the complexion, um, there was obviously four changes and we still had opportunities um, and I like the fact that Paul picked up on Barclays and I think he's been excellent the last three or four games. He's showing that willingness to work without the ball, he's moving in different areas and as soon as you get in 1v1s in the space ahead of him he can cause all sorts of problems. So, so many positives. And uh, some of the res uh, some of the decisions going our way, I will call a positive too. Uh, yeah, and Reading weren't happy about the penalty decision either, Becky. What was your view on that? And um, I think, again, hard to see from where I was sat, but I like the run that Gales made. So if it was a handball or not handball, like the, the goalkeeper has made contact with Gale, and that is from his willingness to run in behind, which he did all game. Like he, but Adams, like Bargs was saying, Adams was playing him, um, Ward was playing Gale in. Like he's just that willingness to run, which I think should be rewarded. In this case, it was re rewarded by the penalty, whether it should have been or not, who knows? But yeah. And I suppose what what you could say is, and I think you made the point in commentary at the time, Sean. There was a similar incident in the first half where Tyler Binden catches Gale and he's shown a yellow card, but that could easily have been a red. Yeah, I, I thought it was a red. Um, I looked at it again and um, unless there's a different rule, I don't know. He looked like he was the last man. He looked like he was going to get a chance to have a free shot at goal. So I thought he was a little bit lucky there. Um, in respect to the, the penalty, the run's great, the ball's great, but the awareness of Gale, I don't know if you noticed the little glance towards the goalkeeper, just as that ball's bounced and he wanted to see where the goalkeeper was. And I mentioned to you maybe five or ten minutes before that, the keeper's super easy, is what we call a proactive keeper that wants to come off his line, wants to collect things, wants to be part almost of that back line. Gale recognises that. Now whether he's handballed it or not, that's just him getting between the, the goalkeeper and the ball. There might have been a nudge, that might have been the reason why there was handball. You can see why Reading will be walking away here 
very, very disappointed. But in the long and short of it, they were second best team throughout. And at Starby, you have the points in large part thanks to Dwight Gale. Let's hear from the goal scorer. Yeah, I'm over the moon. Um, perhaps could have been a bit more comfortable towards the end. Um, but at the moment, I think it's just about getting the results. And uh, we, we did that today. Um, obviously, they scored at a, a bad time for us, but we managed to, to get the second and yeah, send the, send the fans home happy. And we obviously got the big one on Saturday now. You sort the goal ever so well. Does it help when you've got Joe Ward putting in balls like that? Yeah, um, Ward is such a, a technically gifted player. He, he obviously uh, has got such good technique and he puts the ball into such good areas. So as a striker, it's, it's, it's what you want. So as soon as he gets the ball sort of thing, you start to, to, to make the runs. And luckily, I managed to end up on one of them today. And, and part of the incident for the penalty as well, you seem to get a lot of joy tonight putting the ball behind and, and you primarily chasing after? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, it, it comes from, from a great pass from, from Ebbs. He, he put uh, one in the first half as well, and we spoke about it before. It's just about getting these connections that you have. Obviously, myself and Wardy have been people, and he's obviously with others that he's created assists for, but it's about getting to these partnerships with people and just working together, really. Three very different goals for you in your Derby County career so far. Do you, do you feel like a man in form? Um, yeah, obviously I feel over the moon at the moment. For for the last two years, it's been frustrating for me in, on the goal front, and to be back in in amongst it is just fantastic. And to hear the fans singing my name and stuff is just like a dream come true again. To be just going out there with a smile on my face and enjoying my football again. You mentioned the last couple of years and, and how it's maybe not gone your way. What's different here? Um, it feels like a nice environment in terms of what the gap has created. In terms of everyone's just pulling in the same direction. It feels it feels like I've come into someone ver somewhere very welcoming, and everyone's working on obviously the big prize, which is getting promoted. And I'm just thoroughly enjoying that 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 opportunity. How do you feel looking ahead to Saturday and, and what now looks to be an even bigger game? Yeah, it's obviously um, it's obviously a, a, t a tough game that. We know we're going to have to be at it to, to get the result, but at the same time, these are the opportunities that we 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 look forward to. And obviously, if we can get the fans behind us, and and hopefully we can get their result. Well done tonight. Thank you. That's Derby striker Dwight Gale. Results from tonight show you just how important it was that Derby claimed all three points at Pride Park this evening. Barnsley winning at Carlisle, who made it interesting uh, in the end. Uh, the leaders, Portsmouth, holding on to beat Burton Albion by two goals to one. John Brayford uh, pulled one back, laying on for the visitors, but that was all. And Bolton warming up for the weekend with a 5 0 thrashing of Oxford United, who have really fallen away uh, in their promotion uh, challenge. Big win for Lincoln as well, 6-0 uh, over Cambridge. The table then is pretty much as you were for the top three. Uh, Portsmouth with the five-point lead over the Rams, who lead Bolton by a point. Bolton comes to Pride Park at the weekend. Uh, Barnsley back up to fourth, at least for now, with Peterborough facing Stevenage tomorrow night in a massive game in terms of the top six. The other end, uh, the damage isn't too bad for running, given results elsewhere. They're five clear of the bottom four, as are Burton, as are Cambridge, uh, Fleetwood, Cheltenham, Port Vale, Carlisle with lots to do. Well, we'll just get a final word uh, from the guys ahead of uh, the weekend, uh, which looks uh, bigger than ever, Becky. Uh, yeah, so obviously the result tonight really helps just that momentum, that consistency that I was talking about. But yeah, we just have to go into that game on Saturday, like the same start, the same temper that we started today's game with, just that positive movement, the different link up play and just, we just need to have that belief in ourselves that we can do it. And that has been shown through the last like three games that we've played. It probably won't decide things, Sean, but I'm sure it's going to feel that way at the weekend. Well, every game's going to feel like that from now until the end of the season. Um, what is promising and what is positive is the way that we're performing and getting results at the moment. Throughout the season, we've I think we've had times where performances have been brilliant and then results haven't been great and vice versa. And it just feels at this point, probably the most important time of the season, we've found everything. We've, we've found players that are performing at a high level. We've found a way to 
play and build in different ways. The, the energy from the lads has been exceptional. So hopefully we've hit the sweet spot right at the, at the important time. Hey, Box, Becky, thank you for your company. The saving that's all from us for now. If you want more reaction to today's game, it'll be on the website, dcfc.co.uk. We'll see you Saturday uh, for a massive afternoon. From me and the team, goodbye.